Thank you. So tonight is senior night, and we want to make the most of our seniors and celebrate them. A live mic really makes a huge difference, so that's my funny, that's my funny moment for tonight. I did not turn a mic on. So anyways, so the reason why we want to do a night like this and the reason why we invited you as parents to come out, even if you don't have a senior, uh, we want to give you hope that if your kid stays through youth group throughout all these years, that if they're faithful in youth group, they could be a leader in our group, and that can give encouragement to our younger kids. Because I think for a healthy youth group, you have to have healthy, strong student leaders. And we look to our seniors to be our student leaders. So tonight, we want to celebrate the leaders in our youth group. And for those of you who are juniors who are going to be seniors uh, next year, take some notes and learn from them so that you can be a good leader as well in our, in our youth group. So before we do our youth panel, we want all of our seniors, if you're here, come up here right now up front and give them a hand. You can cheer for them. And probably more importantly, if you are a parent of a senior, we want you to come up here and cheer for you. So if you are a parent of a senior. <laughs> and we want to say uh, for our seniors who are just here tonight, they didn't get here by themselves, but they had adults, leaders, parents that played a major role uh, in their life. So we want to say thank you to the people you've raised and for what they mean to me and what they mean to our church. So right now I'm going to pray for you guys. And then we'll do something else tonight. We'll move on to our next thing. So, uh, dear Jesus, we thank you for all of our seniors here who are graduating. We thank you uh, for the parents and for the adults that have played a major part in their lives. And I pray in this next chapter that you continue to keep your hand on them, that you would direct their lives, and that they would find that good plan you have for them. We give this prayer in your son's name. Amen. You guys may have a seat. And for our lesson tonight, we're going to do a senior panel. So you guys, with your last night in youth group, you guys get to uh, lead the lesson. So we have some questions that hopefully you thought through, and one of you told me you did not already. So that's senioritis, and that's funny for me, but not for you because I just said that. Now you're probably embarrassed, and I should have done that, and now I feel bad. So I'm going to stick to the script right here. So, we don't clap for the script. All right, so first question, what is your funniest memory? What is one of your funniest memories from youth group? And maybe this was it, I don't know. Who wants to go first? I'll stop talking. I'll, I'll go first. Um, uh, all right, so first of all, I apologize to uh, Floyd and Emily if they didn't know this story. Um, but Cajun probably knows where we're going with this. Um, so momentum, um, two years ago um, at Cedarville, um, we have a Dollar General right across from where our dorms are at, and so we're like, we got, we got to take advantage of this somehow. Um, and, so, and so we were over there one day, um, just looking around for stuff. I don't even know what we were looking for, to be honest. And we found this chocolate X-Lax, and we're like, dude, like, we have to buy this. Um, we didn't know what we were going to use it for yet. We just knew we had to buy it, um, either to prank someone or whatever. Um, so throughout the week we've been playing this game called what are the odds um, so what you do is you dare someone to do something um, and then depending on how severe it is or whatever um, they'll give you like uh, a number range we usually do one to ten um, and then you both count down um, to three and then you say a number between one and ten and if it's the same number then they have to do that dare um, so we have the bar of chocolate sitting there well chocolate yeah um, 
and, uh, <laughs> and Ian comes in, and we're like, hey, Ian, what are the odds you eat one, one square of this, of this chocolate, X-Lax? Um, he knew it was X-Lax, so it's okay. Um, and he said one to 10, um, and Luke is the best what are the odds player I've met. Um, so like, all right, we'll get Luke to do this one. Um, so uh, they both count down, and three, two, one, eight. They both say eight, and we just start losing it. We are going crazy. Um, and so instead of eating one bar, Ian eats like four little squares. And we are like, like, are you crazy? Like, what are you doing? And so Kaysen was in there too. Um, and I don't even think we had to do what are the odds with Kaysen. He's just like, Ian's like, it's actually not that bad. It tastes pretty good. And so Kaysen's like, all right, let me try some. So Kaysen goes ahead and eats a couple. Um, and we, we just can't believe any of this. But the craziest part about this all is that it, affect, it did not affect them at all. Um, Kaysen said he got like a little upset stomach later, but we were expecting like not to see them for a couple of days or something, but like we, wa we wanted it to be big, but it was just like we were kind of upset when nothing happened, but you know, it's, it's what it is. So that, that was my funny moment. Um, mine is also from Momentum. It's from my first year. Um, going into ninth grade, I was very, um, very bad at making decisions. So um, on the way down, we were driving in the van and we had this thing called a designated lane shifter and Ryan would ask if he was good and someone would say yes and then um, I somehow got the job, I don't know who gave it to me but I got it and Ryan asked am I good and I said yes, no, maybe, I don't know <laughs> and then and it just created all kinds of confusion <laughs> and then I got fired. I do not have a funny story, but I promise youth is fun. I just cannot think of one. <laughs> so, I have like six years of youth. It took me a long time to think of something. Um, and I don't think I found the best story, but I did find like, it wasn't funny at the time, but now looking back at it, it was pretty funny. Um, so we were on our way to Uprise. I was really little, I forget who how little I was, but it was like a baby um, youth grouper, I guess you want to call it, um, <laughs> and it was, Ryan was driving, I think Lara was in the front seat, and then it was Smalls, um, like Joey was in the van, and then it was me and Olivia Smith, which is never a good combination, and Smalls did not stop talking, and for some reason I thought I had like this whole bunch of power, and if I can quote it correctly, I said, Smalls, we are bigger than you, and we are stronger than you, and Olivia can beat you up. <laughs> Hi. My um, funny story, uh, it took me a while to figure out one, uh, but then I figured out one when Joey went, because he said momentum, and then I was like going through it, and I thought of like orange slices. Like, and Joey was my partner for it, which is kind of not fair. <laughs> Because he's like tall and very skinny, and, like when you throw orange slices at someone skinny, it's like hard. And then, he, and then you have me, and I kept getting hit all the time. It wasn't fair. <laughs> so yeah, that was my funny story. All right. So, what has been one of your favorite trips while in youth group? Um, probably also my first year at Momentum. Just. I don't know, the atmosphere of it, just me going into something new, and I didn't really know anyone. I knew Ian, Joey, and Levi went, and other than that, I didn't have a really solid relationship with anyone, and we stopped at Grace College for the first night, overnight, and I just felt like that was a really good bonding experience for everyone, and I made a lot of relationships that I still have today, and I just felt like I bonded a lot going into the week rather than bonding throughout the week. Um, so my favorite trip, um, I, I kind of lumped like the Urban Hope trips together just because I love going down there every year. Um, so it's, it wasn't like a specific uh, moment or something. I just always remember that um, going down with Brian uh, is always fun. Um, but, you know, cracking jokes about him and stuff, but he likes that. No. Um, but I, I just really like the Urban Hope trips um, just because we're kind of all together like the whole weekend. You know, it's not too long where you start hating each other. Um, but it's, it's short enough where, you know, you enjoy it. Um, so I just really like the Urban Hope trips, um, riding down and, 
and serving the, the ministry we do down there together um, it was really great. So that was the trip I enjoyed. And watching March Madness all weekend. So, so I would have to be with Luke. Um, momentum is really awesome. It's just such a cool atmosphere, and you're praising Jesus with so many people that have the same love for Jesus as you. And if y'all didn't sign up yet, you definitely should, because it is so cool. So mine would also be my first trip at Momentum. Um, I think it was the first year we were at Indiana Wesleyan, um, and that was a trip where we went and helped tear down like a barn by a church. and. Um, then the previous years, we got to go back and visit the church and see what they all did. So it was um, really neat to see the progress and do some physical labor to help them that way. Um, I think my favorite trip would be Momentum. Um, I think because you have like a lot of people from like different areas from of the nation and stuff, and you kind of get to like figure out like how their experience in life and stuff. It was kind of like cool and stuff, and. And you kind of just have fun, and like you got deep with within within God and stuff, with the music and everything. And I just like loved it, to be honest. So that's why that's my favorite. All right, if you have not experienced momentum or, or urban hope yet, uh, please consider going. You've heard how those trips have benefited these guys, and those trips could benefit you as well. So third question: In what ways has youth group helped your relationship with Jesus? All right, I'll just go first then. Um, so personally, um, I would say the discipleship groups. Um, we have a, a Whopper D group is the name of our discipleship group. Um, but like more importantly, like the, the, the theme of that, um, of having accountability partners, um, was probably the biggest thing that helped me um, throughout youth group um, and kind of with high school too. Um, I just, it was just a great time. Um, you know, your accountability partners uh, help you find the faults um, in your life, the things you're struggling with, uh, and the things you don't always see. Um, and just the idea of them, um, we really preached, you know, we want to tell someone um, when we see something, but we want to do it in a loving way. And, that, and we were able to accomplish that. Um, and so uh, it was really, really big for us to um, have an accountability group like that, um, personally. And it just really helped my walk with Christ, um, just fixing areas in my life that need fixed and focusing on, you know, wh what to do next, uh, what to continue to work at. And so that was probably the, the biggest thing at youth group for me. Um, mine was also accountability groups, but I have a couple others. Um, I don't know, be, when I got older, like being a senior, it's just, it was really important to me to be a good leader and to always put my best foot forward to show other people what to do and I mean we should always be putting our best foot forward but that really helped me that was a motivator to do that and youth group also helped me get out of my shell a lot um, I was a very shy person and I still am like talking in front of you really freaks me out but um, like sixth seventh eighth and even like through tenth grade I was just a really shy person and you wouldn't have ever seen me singing up there or talking up here like you wouldn't have seen me doing these opportunities making these opportunities and um, I'm a really different person and maybe that's annoying to a lot of people but I think it's good um, I'm with Joey like the disciple groups like making friends in youth has been like really awesome and it's good to reach out to people that don't know Christ but it's also good to have friends that are really firm in their faith and it also like Daryl and the other um, leaders have like preached on things that like I wouldn't have gotten into the word so much about like it's, I'm definitely more knowledgeable about the word um, from their sermons and praise band also has like been really impactful and we're not just up there singing for you guys. Like, it's not a show. We're singing with you. And it's just awesome. Music is definitely one of the things that I feel closest to Christ through. And it's just awesome to see how the Spirit moves through that. Um, youth group, oh. Uh, I think the people um, probably helped a lot. Like, even, like, here, even, like, people even at school because uh, they're at school also. Um, they have helped me, like, like with um, with my struggles and stuff, and I think and it has brought me closer to Jesus and stuff, and they will keep me in line and everything. And 
I have someone to depend on, people to depend on and everything. Um, for me, it would also be like Bible studies in smaller groups um, or even like urban hope trips because you get like a smaller group of just the youth group and you guys, like you get to bond really well and then um, you guys just like become whole basically and like even momentum like how like the youth group, you can just tell they come closer and the clicks start to um, like fade away and we just all become like one big group. That's something that's really helpful because then you just feel like comfortable with anybody around you and you can confide in anyone in the youth group um, and like little smaller Bible studies because then you get accountability partners, people to be like, hey, like you're doing the wrong thing or hey, like you're doing good, keep going. Um, and also just like book studies like Daryl Holds, those are really helpful because we don't just choose random books, like we choose a book that will really help you um, grow in Christ and really just help you um, follow your walk. So. All right, so if you could do one thing different in a youth group, what would it be? That's why I didn't want to start. Um, so for me, um, one thing I would do different in a youth group, um, I was thinking probably um, take it more serious when I was younger. Um, I'd say like sixth, seventh, eighth grade, middle school years, um, just working on applying stuff to my life better um, instead of taking it in one ear out the other. Um, cause, and that's one thing I really then try to work on. Because um, a lot of times, um, I mean, you, you pay attention to the lesson, you hear the lesson, and you're like, wow, you know, that was good. And you can apply it to yourself sitting in the seat. But then as soon as you walk out the doors, you know, even remembering that night, telling your parents what happened, you don't have that same level of application. Um, and so I think one thing that I would have done differently was, you know, take it more seriously. Um, the younger I was, um, so the older I got, I was more prepared. Um, but yeah, that would probably be it. Um, like I said before, I can't really make decisions, so I didn't really have one, but I'll just, I'll just go with one. Um, I just forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> um, I guess I'll, along the same lines as Joey, just take it more to heart, even even as you get older, just, I mean, everything that, like, you can get something out of every lesson, even if you think it doesn't directly apply to you, you can find something that directly applies to you, and just to do that, instead of kind of tuning out when I just thought, you know, this doesn't apply to me, so why do I need to listen to it? Uh, just to, I don't know, something I'm really bad at is taking notes, and I find when I do take notes, I get a lot more out of it, so just to do stuff like that. Um, I definitely wish I would have reached out in the community more, and we do some of that stuff now, and Ben Kurtz has been doing a really good job with um, prayer walks that he's been planning, and it's just really neat, and I know that I drive through the cove, and I really, like, pass so many houses, and I don't even think about the people inside of them and what they might be going through, and the prayer walks have been, like, really good. I haven't gone on one yet, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've been hearing about them, <laughs> and um, I did it at Urban Hope, and it was really cool um, just to pray, obviously, and if you get the opportunity, I definitely would do it. Um, one thing I would do different is I think I should have got more involved in, in our, a lot of stuff, like be able to spread the word more and things and pray with people more and stuff. That was one thing I really, I guess I was a lot sh like kind of shy a little bit towards certain things. And, and cause I wasn't like used to it a lot until I came here. And so I just wasn't like, it was kind of a big difference in, in stuff and I just, so. Um, but, I kind of got, I don't know, I think I'll do it a bit. So for me, it would be um, just when I was younger, like like ninth grade and 10th grade, just being more of a leader in the high school because when you're in middle school, like you're like so excited to be in the youth group. So we were just like really advocating our youth group through the middle school because we were like older kids, like we were like, yeah, like, like well, it's easier to be a leader when you're older. Um, but once you get to the high school, you're kind of afraid of the uh, like older classmen, and like you don't want them to hate you, and you just want to be liked. So you don't really want to like make anyone upset. So you don't really advocate advocate um, youth group in high school. So for me, it'd be doing that more. 
I think as we got older, we became more leaders, but just being a younger leader because you don't have to be like older to be a leader. I'm gonna add to mine a little bit because um, I think I should have been more leader because I know I did like couple, like I wasn't like a good role model a lot of the time. And I think I should have been because of my, because like the younger people and stuff. They like, they like see me and like, and, and stuff as like a bigger person and and stuff. And that's one thing I didn't do. And I think that's something I should have changed. And that was probably the toughest question I could ask. So thank you guys for being honest. And like we say here, uh, no one does anything perfect 100% of the time. I think you guys have done a tremendous job in youth group. But when it comes to this time in your life, once it's gone, it's gone. So for you guys that are still going to be in youth group, like don't have regrets, right? Like do things. Don't say, I wish I had gotten momentum or urban hope, but take advantage of the opportunities that God is giving you in this season of life. So uh, next question, how, we're gonna actually reverse the last two. So how has your experience at youth helped with a difficult experience at school? Um, I can go first. Uh, school's really difficult sometimes just because I mean you're around people that you don't always wa want to be around they can really get on your nerves and me personally like I've, I've been through a lot of hardships just this year and um, it's just youth has been really good getting me through that but I mean even if you're not going through anything really big you're still gonna have a bad day every once in a while things are still gonna get on your nerves people are gonna do something to you that you don't like there's always gonna be something happening and Youth really just gave me a place to let that out and just to worship Jesus in a pure form. And it, it also gave me people to go to, like, an accountability group. And another thing is, if you are going through hardships, just know that there is a reason for that. There, like, don't worry and let God bring you peace and show you what you need to do through that and what it's going to make you become. And just trust his plan and just give him control in every situation. And that's just... That's how it has helped me through school. Um, so kind of like Luke said for me too, I'd say, um, you know, youth was uh, kind of a refresher for me. Um, you know, it's midway through the week um, and sometimes a lot of stress can build up. Uh, but it was just a place where I knew coming in, um, you know, no one was forcing me to do anything. It was just a place where I could kind of relax and worship God um, and then kind of you know, push my worldly th things aside and, and give them to God um, for the night um, and, and just to hear his word. Um, and that was also a good segue um, into the weekend for uh, maybe hanging out with friends or whatever. Um, so I'd say for me, experiences at school, the biggest part was probably being prepared, um, you know, preparing yourself every day um, to, to be sharing at, at school and stuff and, and youth just kind of gave me that, um, you know, through the week, you, you say, you know, did I do anything Monday or Tuesday um, to serve God at school? Uh, and then youth was a time to say, well, I need to do something Thursday and Friday, um, and then also the next week. Um, but I also wanted to say um, to the youth leaders, um, they really helped us out, um, each and every one of them. I, I was going to do names, but I didn't want to miss anyone, and I know every one of them has helped me out in some way. Um, and so I just want to say thank you to you guys, um, because... Um, just little things, I mean, there's a good many of you, but so just little things uh, everyone says um, or jokes around with or lighthearted, it just, it's really relaxing um, just to hear from you guys all the time or um, coming up and speaking and stuff. Uh, that just, that really speaks big in our lives to see you guys um, doing that. Um, so I, I just want to say thank you to all the youth leaders um, because that really uh, gave me an example of, of how to um, live out my Christian life and seeing you guys do that in front of us um, every day uh, was really big, so th I just wanted to say thank you at some point to you guys, so. I'm with Joey and Luke about the refreshing coming here during the middle of the week. It's just a really good refresher. And also, um, the fish analogy has helped me at school and in the community a lot. Um, before, I didn't really know how to initiate a conversation with somebody or like what to say when I went up to them, but Fish has really helped me reach out to people and show them Christ.
Um, youth group has helped me. Um, it, I, um, I came to a place that I can get my mind off a lot of stuff and all the struggles and stuff. And then there's people who I can talk to about stuff too. And it kind of, and also created friends for me, even when at school and stuff. And they kind of helped me and stuff and told me if I was doing something wrong and stuff and tried to like be there for me and stuff and that was one like one of my favorite things about youth and stuff was the people because they're there and that is a place that um uh people won't be mean and stuff and they'll be kind and everything and so I think a big thing for me was knowing that I wasn't alone in some of my struggles and like fears and stuff. Um, that you can just come to youth group and you can just talk with people openly, and then you realize that you're not alone, and um, that there are people that care about you like tremendously, and they're here to help you and pray for you and just walk alongside of your um, like your hardships. And also, I think just like having real good, strong Christian friends, because um, sometimes going through school, you're like walking towards the Lord and you look like to your side and your friends are no longer there. Um, and then you can come to youth group and you know that you still have your Christian friends here. All right, last question. What is one piece of advice you would give for those who will be in youth group next year? Um, I have two, so I'm sorry that I broke the rules. Um, but the first one is um, just jump at every opportunity you're given, uh, whether it be just helping someone out at, on a Wednesday night or going on a mission trip or just going to Momentum or Urban Hope or something little like that. Just jump at every opportunity you're given, even if you think, like, this isn't for me, this isn't who I am. I mean, it can become who you are, or you can find something there that is who you are. And, I mean, God finds crazy ways for you to worship him and to serve him. And if you don't go, like, you're, not, you're never going to know if you miss something, if you miss an opportunity. And um, if you don't jump at every opportunity you're given, they're eventually going to stop coming, and you're eventually going to wonder wh where they are when you need one or when you want one. So just jump at every opportunity you're given here is one piece I, I would give. And another one is find an accountability group or just someone to be close with because it, it doesn't really, or it doesn't only make youth better, it makes it more of an experience, it also makes just life better. When you have an accountability partner and maybe you only get to see them Wednesday at youth and that's something you can look forward to, that's something you can look forward to meeting afterwards and talking and just it makes everything a lot more real. So that's some pieces of advice I would give. All right. <clears throat> wow, that was weird. <laughs> Sounded like I was going to cry or something. I'm kidding. Um, so my advice would probably be um, just kind of, as I said earlier, um, just to really take your relationship with Jesus Christ seriously. Um, I would say uh, the biggest thing is really step back and examine your relationship with Jesus as, as a whole. Um, <clears throat> it must have been that Sprite or something. I'm not crying. I, I don't cry, really. Um, <laughs> um, but I would say, yeah, see, you know, take a look at your actions, take a look at your words, take a look at your friends, um, take a look at what you're putting your time into, um, you know, what's your time going to, and, you know, really ask yourself, you know, how seriously am I taking my relationship with Jesus Christ? Um, because I think that's the most important thing, obviously, is your relationship with Jesus, and um, he wants everything to be focused on him. Um, and kind of going back to myself, I feel like a lot of times, you know, you didn't take that seriously, um, the saying, you know, you kind of went through the motions. Um, so my advice would be, you know, Start now. Start um, as soon as possible to take your relationship serious with Christ um, because it only builds on itself um, one way or the other. Um, you, you know, it can either go drift away or you can just continue to get stronger uh, Christian, um, you know, relationship with Christ. So um, that, that's what I would say. Um, that's kind of a personal thing, too. Um, you have to ask yourself um, and dig deep in that way. But also I would say um, jump into as many events as possible. Um, personally, I try to go to a lot of, of stuff. Um, and really just have fun doing it because um, youth group is a place where you can, um, you know, live uh, the joy you have in Christ together as a body of Christ. Um, and it just really creates so many fun memories, um, the ones that last forever and the best ones because you share them with people that love Christ just like you do. 
Um, so really just, I'd say enjoy it, have fun. I mean, I have so many memories with Quinn. Quinn loves to have fun. Um, <laughs> even if it's breaking the rules, um, you know, sometimes you just gotta have fun. I'm kidding, follow the rules. Um, but yeah, so just enjoy every event. Go to as many things as possible. Um, live your youth group days up, because um, they go by fast, so live it up in a good way. Yeah. Um, I know everyone tells you always to get involved, and lots of times, I know for myself, I never really did that until like senior year, because I said, oh, that's out of my comfort zone, and I don't really want to do that. But we're not meant to live comfortably. Um, life should be uncomfortable for us if we're um, really doing Christ's will in our lives. And just really get involved and do the things that um, are put in front of you and get every opportunity that you can. Um, I, have two, yeah, t I have two things. Um, uh, the first one is that you need to be, um, to be yourself because everyone's unique in their own way and stuff. And you don't let other people tell you what you're not and stuff and what to do and everything. And the second thing is that... Um, Time on earth is short, but time with God is endless. You need, um, you need to, I don't know how to say this. Um, all right, things that you do on earth will affect what you do afterwards and stuff, where you go and stuff. And if you don't do what's right and stuff, you won't be, you won't go into like heaven, like you won't like, if you don't follow God or anything, you don't follow Jesus and stuff, you don't have him in his heart, then I don't know how to say this. I think you said it really well. You know, our time here is short, and you need to follow God, and you need to be yourself. That Don't try to be what other people want you to be, but be who God has created you to be. I think that's really good, Gavin, so thanks for sharing that. What he said. <laughs> Kennedy? Um. You guys, all the younger kids, I'm talking to you guys, don't be afraid to step up and um, lead because whenever you get to your senior year, you'll really have things um, going strong. And anybody, like, don't be afraid to lead in your school. Um, take, it, take it out of youth group. Just really take that opportunity. Like, I know for me, it was really out of my comfort zone, and sometimes I shied away from those opportunities. Just take the opportunities um, because you don't have them very long. Um, I look back at it and I see that I'm not going to see those people every single day ever again. Um, and so you really want to take advantage of that um, and just make a lasting impact in your school. Um, and one more thing I was going to say going along with that, um, make sure you're applying everything you learn at youth group, like she was saying, to school um, because that, that really helps. Um, you're, you're, able to, you're able to see uh, the stuff you learn, um, put it into use at school and stuff, and that just, that really it's like a self-motivation thing. Um, I mean, we can all uh, attest to that. Um, but yeah, when you soak stuff up, make sure you're, you're using that. Um, kind of like my dad used a sponge analogy a couple times. You know, you're getting filled up with a sponge, and if you're just getting filled up, just a sponge sitting there, you know, water's flowing out of you. It's kind of disgusting or whatever. But if you fill that sponge up and then you wash a car with it or, or you use, clean something with it, that sponge can be filled up again and can continue to be used. Um, and so that's kind of how, make sure you're applying stuff you learn at church, at youth group, at Momentum, at camp, um, to your everyday life. So, right. Let's give them a hand for sharing. <laughs> and we're going to ask the band to come back up. <laughs>